Hello reviewers, welcome to my channel Science to Technology. In today's show, Future Friday, I'm going to talk about what is the status of basically at the end of 2020 uh, nuclear fusion. So let's dive right into it. Well, first we have to understand what the heck is fusion. Now, fusion is basically the idea of taking two or more atomic nuclei and combining them into one bigger one. Now, sometimes it could have uh, other byproducts, but generally that's what we uh, think of when we are talking about fusion. For example, you can take two isotopes of hydrogen and combine them. In doing so, you will get a base very, very high energy neutron and then you're going to get a helium. Basically, you took two lightweight, made a one heavyweight one and this neutron can carry on the reaction. Now. This is the whole idea of it. Now, first thing you have to understand, the output of this system, it's very low to no radioactive. For example, it does sometimes create, because again, there is a very high power uh, new, neutron involved here, which has a tendency of making other things radioactive. It does have some uh, byproduct that is radioactive. However, the reason why it's called a clean system is because compared to other options, for example, fission, it's like comparing something that will be radioactive to a point where you can use that in your watch to make it glow at night. That's what we do right now versus like something that is so radioactive that we have to bury it and hope that nobody digs it up in 10,000 years. So fundamentally, one is like very manageable. It's like a minor inconvenience versus something the most deadliest thing we humans ever created. So fundamentally, the output, basically, once we actually consume the fuel, the output, the byproduct is not very deadly. That's one good thing. Second aspect, what about the fuel? What if the fuel itself is very dangerous? Because like if uh, fuel is very complicated, very dangerous, very radioactive, you will need very large uh, personnel, a lot of training, a lot of equipment, a lot of shielding. Those are expensive and tedious and dangerous also. So fundamentally, this puppy is good on that also because uh, while some uh, isotopes are radioactive, they are not that dangerously radioactive example being it's in your watch so fundamentally uh, basically isotopes of hydrogen they are not that powerful when it comes to radioactive so it's manageable and here's the interesting part while the output is uh, less radioactive while the input is less radioactive the output of the power like the oomph you get out of it that makes look fusion like a little toy you know that's a that's a cool toy you got there so that's the whole point that's why we want to do this it's like first we take care of uh, radioactive waste permanently that's awesome and while doing so while reducing it's not like okay we are doing this car engine which is much more efficient but it's also less horsepower no 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 this is like we made car, uh, car engine which is like you know very efficient has very little emission and it's like freaking 100 times more powerful that's the whole point of this that's why we want to do this and this will allow us to achieve two core factors first it will allow us to achieve clean energy which means it's not contaminating the environment it's uh, used in so that's awesome abundant after this is the core weakness of uh, basically uh, solar wind and things of that nature it's just that it's not everywhere not every time however fusion basically that's the power of the sun in the palm of a human hand if we can truly achieve this bye 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 energy crisis so that's the whole point that's why we are so excited about fusion now what about the fuse this is the whole aspect of it and now you have to understand it Technically speaking, almost everything can be fused and that's how your uh, periodic table is made. Think of it this way, like Big Bang only created hydrogen or some parts of helium. How the heck you got everything else? You got it through fusion. However, uh, not all of them are exothermic. Many of them are endothermic. So basically, for example, you can fuse oxygen, get energy out. You can uh, fuse carbon, get energy out. You fuse iron, you will absorb energy. That's what happens when a star dies. So basically, you reach a point in your periodic table, so it will start to absorb energy. So those things are only created as supernova. So, and those again, those are pulse creation because again, it cannot continue the reaction. It's not exothermic. So we are talking about exothermic. Again, we want to use it as a fuel. We want to run a generator, quote unquote. So we want a fuel that is exothermic. That's the first point. Second, for many reasons, it has to be low atomic number. Anything below iron. That's the first point because everything after it is exothermic. Uh, endothermic, pardon me. Now, uh, the reason why we want basically low atomic number is simple. Uh, think of it this way. You take an atom, you heat that puppy up, you go yellow on it, you go like 100 million degrees Celsius on that or Kelvin on that. Uh, what you do, you basically make it into a plasma. What does that mean? That simply means electron shell is now empty. Electron is not there. It's like in a soup. So what do you have? Heavy particles in the soup. You have nucleus. Now, nucleus have two particles, uh, two aspects of it. One is neutron. Another is basically proton. Now, proton is charged. Neutron is neutral. It does not care. However, if you take two of these and you want to fuse them that's the whole point of fusion uh, the neutron is like I don't care but proton is like that shall not come close to each other why two positive particles 
they really don't want to mix and that's why we have to heat these puppy up so bonkersly it's like we want to quote and quote break the cool on barrier it's like no get together get married together we have to make sure they get married together and that's the whole problem that's the barrier aspect and if you try to do this uh, with a heavier element in principle in technical reality you can achieve that it's just good luck building a reactor for that so these things are a whole point and everything else also has another dynamics of quantum physics and uh, uh, cross radiation cross sec uh, radiation i'm saying basically cross section of reaction so all those things combined at this point in time humanity's best option is deuterium and tritium now you will hear these things used all the time now you're like why the heck we are only focusing on this if we have so many options below uh, basically iron reality is this puppy is the easiest now this should give you a real uh, grounding of humanity's uh, capability as an engineering uh, civilization because we do have a system that can achieve much heavier than we use them in H bombs. We have the technology. It's just that making a reactor out of it, that's not a technology we possess. Our engineering is limited at this point in time. So deuterium and tritium is the easiest. The energy requirement, the temperature requirement, all of those are chump change. Everything else, we have tried that. We have achieved that either in particle accelerators, either in uh, fusion reactions, like you know experimental reactions or like big boom events we have achieved all those just reality is these are the easiest to do everything else is far more complicated now how the heck you get the energy out of it let's say you take deuterium tritium you combine them you got helium out so what you're supposed to do with helium nothing uh, you have to just let it go uh, the hill and core interesting point is neutrons now those neutrons are very high energy now what does that mean that simply means when you have that soup of plasma where these things are happening you will have neutron that will jettison out now you might be like heard of the fact that neutrons are uh, basically the plasma is kept there utilizing electromagnets basically super cooled electromagnets are holding them together it's like no you shall not leave this thing but here's the deal. once fusion actually occurs the neutron is so high energy it simply leaves that system now it does not leave because it's a very high energy it leaves simply because it's neutron it does not care about your magnetic field it's like i don't care it just leaves that so that's how you get the energy out of it while you are confining it if you have fusion there fusion will keep creating new neutron and neutron will leave the quote unquote soup and you will get the energy out how the heck you will get energy out the neutron will hit the uh, reactor wall now reactor wall supposed to be cooled with depending on design some designs have helium running through them some designs have water running through them some have titanium uh, titanium wall uh, some have basically tungsten wall because again neutron is very high energy like if you put something very uh, weak so to say there is two problem with that first it will melt second it will contaminate the plasma because this is inside the reactor so again you do not want anything to contaminate that vacuum plasma the reason why i'm saying this vacuum is because after the magnetic stuff, only neutron should bounce there should not be any air so that's the whole point we have to find suitable material that can handle that carbon is generally a good solution and we have been using this in puppy in reactors for a very long time However, it does come with a side effect that we are still talking about neutrons. Neutrons have the tendency when they are in very high energy mode, they can cause what we call neutron activation. What does that mean? That simply means it can make other things radioactive. Basically, it can take normal carbon. It's like chilling, normal, safe to make it so radioactive that you can make a Chernobyl movie out of it. So that's the whole dangerous aspect of it. And that's why whenever you see people who are actually building the system, uh, once it's actually on, you human not supposed to go inside there for repair. Let's say even if you shut it down, human should not go inside it because it will be radioactive so they are building robots that can work in high neutron environments and take a repair the system from the inside if that is called upon so that's the whole reactive that's the radioactive part of this reactor and if somebody blows up the reactor reactor will not go boom however the particles if they let's say the reactor is somewhere and it blows up and the parts of the inside goes into a civilian population it will cause some serious damage now nowhere near this will be even close to chernobyl so be mindful it's like it will be chump change you will like minor inconvenience versus you know the most expensive cleanup we humans ever did and ever keep doing hopefully so reality is while this is a system there are other options also but all of them require much higher temperatures be mindful we are talking about temperature so high that people don't even give a damn about like which unit you are using either you are using kelvin celsius or fahrenheit it does not make a difference it's so bonkersly high it requires even more bonkers than that and the confinement basically how tightly you are holding that plasma it has to be even more powerful it, you have to basically pinch that puppy up it's like no no you, you have to compress that puppy up so that's very very challenging and we are not able to achieve the easiest one tritium tritium one so if neutron is such a serious thing and not to mention that's the primary energy energy carrier what if we try to utilize something else thankfully there are some nuclear reactions that allows us to energy extract without using neutrons the energy uh, basically output at that point in time becomes proton proton can also carry energy uh, efficiently however uh, because it's charged particle you can 
basically quote unquote guided and because it's a charged particle it does not cause a what we call a neutron activation so radiation goes down from like let's say uh, 100 to almost zero so that's awesome that's the whole point of a neutronic fusion and another aspect is the reason why it's so important for space traveling it's because it allows electrical energy extraction directly because electricity is flow of charged particles so to say so if you have a magnetic field which you have to have and you have something that is uh, ejecting out of it with a lot of energy basically it's gonna resist it it's quote and quote uh, generator you can directly get electricity out of it depending on your design depending on your system it could be ac or it could be dc most of the system generally will get it out as a dc system and uh, in simplest way think of it this way it's reverse of a particle accelerator instead of dumping energy into a particle you are extracting energy out of a particle so that's all we need to do so you will get direct energy output so in in principle a neutronic fusion is what iron man has in his chest now i do not know why they keep going to palladium they could go to lithium or boron both are actually used in weapon systems so that would have been much better system but that will be, that's the only feasible way to you a you will have a lot of energy b it will be actually small enough because again it does not need steam system and turbine system and c it will not radiate the person basically it's not you don't need like you know magic level radiation shield so that's the awesome part of uh, in neutronic fusion and that's why so many science fiction we're gonna mine the moon for helium 3 yeah so that's the whole point so here's the uh, like you know down to earth reality part of it the requirement the energy requirement to actually achieve fusion sustainable one be mindful we can do boom fusion very easily but to actually have a sustained plasma state of fusion yeah it will make deuterium tritium look like child's play fundamentally now i did made a video long ago about this system but i was very bad at conveying it this time i thought I, I found a better system rather than showing this graph i found a better system think of it this way let's say it takes one gigawatt of energy to trigger deuterium and tritium which we are unable to do at this point in time uh, if you want to do deuterium and helium 3 system it will take four times more and the reason why i laugh whenever somebody says helium 3 as an actual fuel source is just like if you can go that far take a proton but uh, bung it up with a freaking lithium and you will get the same thing you will get a neutronic fusion that's awesome and here's the if you have that magical properties from going from 1x to 4x why not go to 8x now you're like why the heck you wanted to go that much complex it allows you to do with boron now be mindful all these reactions are quote and quote a neutronic but they are a neutronic in first generation uh if you have watched chernobyl movie they know like one thing is created another things are created and then they have a lot of half-life a lot of decays and things of that nature that affects the reaction same happens here also not all of them are quote and quote clean reactors all of them are much cleaner compared to deuterium and tritium system but as a neutronic system they will have a lot of secondary output only boron 11 with proton they have the ability to actually contain the whole reaction without having neutron emission so basically it does not matter the reactor is five minutes old or 500 years old it will not become radioactive with other system it will slowly become radioactive so that's why it's like if you have the magical technology just go with boron now if you have magical system where you like we can't do one and people like we, we should mine the moon because it has like, what's the point like there is no point of having that uh, low neutron uh, activation issue uh, like direct energies if we can't achieve one and if we actually can actually achieve one, people talk about moon as like, hey, dude, dude, just take up the bu morning bus. You're going to go there in moon and like, you know, evening and just uh, mine the moon. And here's the fun fact. You cannot mine moon, so to say. Mining generally implies like you have to dig, dig deep. Only regolith, as in top soil, has that. And in such a low concentration, you will find more gold in seawater. Let that sink in. That's the reality of it. So it's like, A, the people who talk about helium-3, actual people as actual scientists they are talking about as a research team like as a developer it's like they want to understand periodic table better they want to understand nuclear physics better quantum physics better awesome uh, and these people will flat out tell you it's like uh, why you're lo looking for a helium 3 because it does have such a interesting nuclear fusion properties a neutronic aspect of it we want to study it understand how the heck happens that's the whole point of funding nasa is like you know it helps them to write the textbook and that's the whole point of nuclear physics it, and like not everything we create is actually useful but it does allow us to have a much thorough understanding maybe in the future generation will figure out some use does not mean right now there will be for example uh, for a few weeks ago i made a video about synthetic elements many elements that have a higher number than 99 they are very unstable fundamentally they decay into like sub uh, low grade particles very quickly as in like milliseconds but why we are making them why we are spending billions of dollars making them it's just helping us learn understand and uh, improve our understanding for actual fundamental level of uh, basically elemental physics same happens here that's why people want to understand helium but to say from that to oh no this is the actual fuel that i want to put in my uh, you know starship or things of that nature no we are, that's not happening and we have helium 3 on earth it's not like it, we don't have it we use it we use it for quantum computer cooling 
so that's the whole reality of it it's so like if we can't achieve deuterium tritium how the heck people are even expecting like everybody talks about helium 3 it's like oh dude if we just had helium 3 now we'll have the reactor to, we do not have the reactor technology and if we had that we would not need it simply because we can a utilize lithium b utilize deuterium tritium and like uh, bypass the system that whatever little helium 3 we have we don't have to use it if it's anything else and we don't have to go to mine to moon it's like why it's like compared to sea water going to the moon to mining it it's like why so a neutronic fusion does have some space application in far 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 future right now nope that's a nope that's a big ass nope now reactors now this is the thing that confuses the most people like we call these things the reactor and these things achieve fusion so what's the problem like we have fusion technology we achieve fusion we have quote unquote reactors so what's the problem the problem is uh things these are basically uh kettles quote unquote they Com uh, compress everything using magnetic system because you cannot physically touch it so it's not like a pressure cooker it's like a magnetic pressure cooker and then you heat that puppy up and you go bonkers with it basically 15 million kelvin bonkers with it at that point in time other things starts to break down basically the plasma starts to radiate heat in other formats sometimes neutrons sometimes it actually touches the uh, chamber wall and reduces time or basically the confinement goes from this to this and we're like what's the big difference here's the deal the moment temperature is like this everything is awesome fusion is happening the moment it expands it cools down so that's a, it's not touching anything it's not even doing anything it's just like plasma is uh, awesome everything is fertile fusion is happening and because fusion dumped so much more energy it expanded and poof that's why a reactor does not work fundamentally you will see that like if there are many videos about like this reactor actually turning on achieving fusion. what's happening that's the thing happening it's like magnets are like confine this puppy yeah awesome fusion awesome energy release cool down so reality is we cannot make them hot enough or for long enough for example at this point in time even if you can actually extract energy out of it it will not do anything because we are not at break even that's the whole point of it a reactor is supposed to provide energy uh, and if you don't have break even meaning the input is not uh, smaller than output it's useless basically you are dumping 100 megawatts of electrical energy and you're getting one megawatt of electrical energy so the reality is even though china did amazing marketing job calling their reactor artificial sun and i have i cannot tell you how many people commented was like dude what is this artificial sun artificial sun china made artificial sun no they did not made anything they just called their fancy reactor into artificial sun. amazing marketing like i have to respect that marketing is amazing but reality is this puppy only lasted for 30 seconds it's like they turned it on 30 seconds uh, the temperature dropped something i was like okay keep uh, repeating the rinse and repeat so reality is flat out we are nowhere near of achieving actual reaction actual reactors nowhere near like not even uh, you know we cannot see it like flat out nothing and we need a factor of 10 basically if we put one gigawatt in we must get 10 gigawatt of thermal energy out if we do not do that because simply because of the conversion losses we will not be able to run uh, keep run, a reactor running fundamentally we cannot do that we have to have 10 x factor then you will have 50 percent energy loss during conversion of thermal energy to electrical energy then the distribution have to be brought into two sections one section will be feeding back the reactor another will be selling out and again, what's the point of it doing something this massive, this bonkers, if only you're going to sell like, you know, female arts of energy. So reality is that 10 is a requirement. So even if tomorrow, let's say after me releasing this video tomorrow, they are like, we have achieved break even. Be mindful. Look for that fine print where it specifies what is the X factor. The X factor must be 10 minimum. So let's do an actual reality check on this. Now, these things are fundamentally speaking at this point in time, if everything is true, still 30 years away flat out if everything holds true if every single startup that is dealing with this if everything works out perfectly in this time which has not happened so far it's still 30 years away fundamentally and after that let's assume somehow magically this thing does happen this time then we come to the second hurdle this is super complex system for example once we figure out fusion reactors they're super easy fusion reactors pardon me fusion reactor they're super simple it's so simple that somebody uh, in their house can build it it's that simple it's just making them safe enough robust enough those things are expensive but making a reactor is fundamentally simple easy heck nasa built a reactor that is so small basically nasa kilowatt reactor that's how simple these things are this thing on the other hand fusion reactors they are they make modern uh, engineering look like a child's play basically uh, your silicon manufacturing industry ah chump change bro chump change those are like you know what which we give to our lkg student this puppy is like you know university level that's the complexity level involved here and operations like the amount of people you have to train to run these things they are bonkers level high so reality is even if we somehow a 
assuming if everything goes true after 30 years we actually have here's the plan for a fusion reactor building it is ludicrously complex running it is ludicrously complex all those will increase the cost which means the electricity that is coming out of it will be even more expensive and then we come to the harsh reality it takes ludicrously long time to build like some of the building plants they've been going for 10 years that's how long it takes to build it it's it's long very very long it's very long and we have already burned through billions not one billion not two billion billions and sometimes billions a year we are burning on this and we are nowhere near that point so what we can expect in the future well so far enough people have woken up to this point that some countries specifically in european unions they're deciding yeah let's not stake everything on this puppy which has not worked so far let's try to utilize the tools we have right now today we have now the only problem with humanity as we now as we exist right now is like we are expecting some sort of a miracle solution is like do this forget about everything else unfortunately we do not have a magical technology like that yet however we have other things that do work for example solar does work wind does work there are a lot of other extra things for example biomass does work biogas does work uh, wave power does work uh, tidal system have been working for freaking 100 years so we have many things heck even uh, people say like you know we need uh, batteries that are huge we have battery banks that are gigawatt hour capacity they're called pumped hydro we have been doing that for 50 years so we have a lot of tools it's just that we have to combine all of them instead of like what people's approach right now to solving the energy problems like if we do this all the problem that will fundamentally not work so now once we start to mix all this problem is gone like done flat out there are days at this point in time in european union that they have achieved 100 plus percent of energy that was created out of green sources 100 plus percent basically 140 percent of green energy it's like what happened to other 40 they sold it to other countries so reality is solar is already cheaper than coal that's why you will see a lot of solar farm farming up because nobody gives a damn about environment everybody gives a damn about their pocket and if you're going to tell this power plant is going to consume coal it's going to sell electricity and it's more expensive versus this system that is simply clean efficient like again clean and efficient simply means like you don't have to spend uh, so much time like you know cleaning dust and you're having fuel stacks and all that jazz it's cheaper it produces more electricity everybody's like dude shut up and take my money so that has already happened be mindful happened past tense solar has already achieved it and wind is only a little bit behind it's not like you know way far back it's like a little bit behind so at this point in time if we deploy basically mixed system right now we can solve it fundamentally then we come to another critical aspect earth's biosphere is degrading that's an absolute thing whether you like it or not that's an absolute thing that does not have decades that does not have the time where it's like yeah wait for like you know 30 to 40 years it's like dude if you are bleeding right now you have to take care of that right now you may have blood pressure don't think about it right now if you're bleeding take care of that first so that's the whole point earth's biosphere does not have decades another aspect is if we go green 100 percent green let's say we go bonkers with energy mix and we utilize every tom dick and harry tool we have in our uh, arsenal we need to solve this problem right now we can still solve the fusion aspect afterwards it's like okay we achieved clean energy we so at least not poisoning our uh, ecosphere anymore now we can utilize fusion and once we achieve that at that point there will not be a ticking clock element it's like dude we have to solve it we can spend time more wisely more efficiently better technology will be there at that point in time and then we'll solve it then we can remove carbon dioxide from the atmosphere so we can do these things but one thing you have to understand money cannot buy time so all the money that already went into fusion plants that's not coming back and that's not gonna give us that 30 years back so reality is we have to make a choice and if we make a bad one we're gonna pay the very big price so this was my presentation on future i hope you liked it learn from it in that case click, click the like button share it amongst your friend that will help me a lot if you didn't like it didn't enjoy it i urge you to press dislike press it twice to show me excess appointment please leave a comment because i try to reply to all of them subscribe press the bell icon if you're free and as always thanks for watching